Imagine you're sitting in a small wooden boat at night on a wide river somewhere in a hot, humid part of Africa. Up above, there's only a thin slice of moon. Water slaps softly against the hull. Insects buzz in the dark. No music, no drama, just the sound of your own heartbeat. Then something slams the river from underneath. The whole boat shudders. The surface of the water swells like something huge just rolled right under you. The camera in your hand shakes like crazy. Spray hits the lens, and for half a second you see it, a broad paddle-shaped tail sweeping past. And under the muddy surface, a long, dark back with a tall sail of bone and flesh. If you ever saw this in real life, then... Mm, my condolences. You've just become a side character in a nature documentary about Spinosaurus. Now, let's rewind time about 95 to 100 million years. Same river, but during the late Cretaceous. On both banks is choking, steamy forest. The air is thick with the smell of mud and rotting leaves. Beneath the surface lives an entire world. Giant fish, saw-toothed rays, lungfish, primitive crocodiles, basically. Everything here has teeth. We're not telling this story from the monster's point of view, but from the point of view of the prey. Yeah, unlucky. A herd of plant-eating dinosaurs shuffles down to the water's edge to drink. The river looks calm, maybe a bit too calm. The mental camera slows down. Everyone's holding their breath. Then a long shadow glides just under the muddy surface. In a flash, a long, narrow snout, packed with cone-shaped teeth, erupts upward like a crocodile torpedo, clamps onto the smallest animal, and yanks it straight under. The water closes again, leaving only a few red ripples. That, right there, is the owner of the river we're talking about today. Spinosaurus, a predator that may have reached 14, 15 meters in length and weighed around seven and nine tons, often called the longest meat-eating dinosaur we know of. You're looking at something longer than a city bus that spends half its life in the water. Ah, suddenly swimming in rivers doesn't sound so relaxing anymore. If there were a job posting for final boss of this river system, Spinosaurus is the candidate you really don't want to interview in person. On land, T. Rex and Giganotosaurus are arguing over who's bigger, who has the stronger bite. Under the water, Spino just flicks that paddle tail of its and every argument goes quiet. The funny part is, for most of the time we've known its name, we actually had no clear idea what it looked like. The story of Spinosaurus is like an old cold case file. Missing evidence, fuzzy witnesses, and scientists a century later still trying to piece together the crime scene from scraps. In the early 1900s in Egypt, a paleontologist named Ernst Stromer dug up some very strange bones, a long skull and huge neural spines rising from the back like the base of a sail. He put them together and drew the first picture of Spinosaurus, a dinosaur with a giant sail along its back. Then World War II arrived. The museum holding those fossils was bombed and almost all of the original spino bones were turned into dust. Game save, deleted. What we had left were a few black and white drawings and some old notes. For decades, artists and filmmakers had to build Spinosaurus out of thin air. Sometimes it looked like a T, Rex, with a sail stuck on, sometimes like a skinny Godzilla on stilts. From the 1,990 seconds onward, new bits of bone slowly trickled in from Morocco and Tunisia a bit of jaw, a few teeth, fragments of skull. Then, in the 2010 seconds and 2020 seconds, more complete skeletons from Morocco finally made scientists go, ah, wait a second. Spino's hind legs turned out to be unusually short, the front of the body long and heavy, and the tail did not look like other theropod tails at all. Instead of a narrow whip, it had a tall, broad tail, the bones arranged into a big, fleshy paddle. When researchers built a 3D tail model and had a robot wag it in a water tank, the thrust it produced was so strong that we basically had to reboot the whole mental image of Spinosaurus. So, over just a few decades, this poor animal kept getting redesigned. First, it's standing tall on two legs like T-Rex. Then it's lumbering on all fours. Now it's semi-aquatic mode, with a huge front body, short back legs, and a big paddle tail like someone mixed crocodile 
dinosaur, and a little bit of fever dream. Few creatures have tortured artists, filmmakers, and toy companies like this one. Every 10 years or so, the scientists show up and say, sorry folks, you'll have to redraw it. But beneath all those revisions, a few traits are rock solid. It had a long, narrow skull, straight, conical teeth with no serrations perfect for grabbing slippery fish. Its nostrils were set higher up the snout so it could breathe while the tip of its mouth was underwater. Its bones were dense and heavy, like it was wearing built-in dive weights to help it sink and control buoyancy in the river. All of that points to one thing. This monster was built to live with water. Zoom the map out a bit. The region we now call the Kem Kem Beds in Morocco was then a vast delta of rivers and wetlands, basically Amazon plus Nile, late Cretaceous edition. Nature there seemed to be playing a game and forgot to balance it. Way too many predators, not a lot of chill plant eaters. On land, you had Carcharodontosaurus, Deltadromius, and other giant theropods. In the water, you had sawfish like Anchopristus a few meters long, big bony fish, ancient sharks, massive crocodiles, and right in the middle of that cast list is Spinosaurus, holding the role of super-sized river monster. If this were an online game, the devs would be roasted on the forums. Too many predators, literally unplayable. Living here, you were either eating, being eaten, or accidentally stuck between two other things that were busy eating each other. Based on the teeth, the jaws, and even gut contents of its close relatives like Baryonyx. Most scientists think Spinosaurus was mainly a fish eater, grabbing aquatic prey, and only occasionally adding some unlucky land animals that strayed too near the riverbank. On land, you can at least duck behind a tree. In the water, if Spino has noticed you, uh, praying might be a little late. It doesn't need to sprint like a T. Rex. It just lies there in the murky current, waiting for a shadow to drift across its snout. But the argument that really set comment sections on fire these past years is, how good a swimmer was it really? One camp is confident. With that paddle tail, dense bones and short hind legs, Spinosaurus could have been a near full-time aquatic hunter, a sort of upgraded croc dino. The other side is more cautious. With that big chest, heavy hips, and weird center of mass, buoyancy models make it look more like a swimmer wearing a life jacket and carrying a 20-kilo backpack. It can swim, sure, but not like some torpedo dolphin. More like a slow, heavy ambush hunter wading through deep water, cruising in the shallows and swamps, rather than zipping across open channels. It really does feel like a courtroom drama. One side stands up. Your Honor, Exhibit A, a paddle tail that produces strong thrust. The other replies, yes, but exhibit B shows a body that's awkward for deep, agile diving. Both sides throw graphs, 3D simulations, even robot tails at each other. We, the audience in the cheap seats, mostly just want to know. So, is it a super croc dino, or just a big clumsy dino that happens to swim? The most honest answer right now is a bit boring but makes sense. Spinosaurus almost certainly lived off the river swimming, wading, and hunting there most of the time. It wasn't a sleek Cretaceous dolphin, but it also wasn't just a land dinosaur that occasionally got its feet wet. Think of it as a semi-aquatic professional, very comfortable in the water, happy to stalk in deep channels, but still able to haul its heavy body up onto land when it needed to. Now, for a moment, let's play our favorite game, What If? Drop a 15-meter, 8-ton Spinosaurus into a modern river system, say, a big North African river today. Early morning, tourist boats slide along calm water, visitors snapping photos of birds and scenery. The guide is mid-speech when, far ahead in the mist, a dark ridge with a very suspicious sail rises just under the surface. Someone whispers, That's not in the brochure, man. Downstream at a hydroelectric dam, Millions of fish are packed into the churning water below the spillway. Under the foam, a Spinosaurus cruises in lazy circles, treating this multi-billion dollar structure like a giant automatic fish feeder. The local fishing industry would have to rewrite its training manual from scratch. 
nets wouldn't just rip because of fish, but because a hungry dinosaur ripped right through them. A group of friends is out kayaking, with a GoPro mounted under the hull. They laugh, splash, enjoy the sun. That night, they play back the footage and realize that for 10 straight minutes, while they were joking on the surface, a huge black shape was swimming upriver just beneath them, tail slowly sweeping, sometimes passing right under the thin plastic of their kayak. The clip goes viral with the title, Real Life River Dragon. Tourism ads for river cruises suddenly add a tiny line at the bottom, chance of seeing a Spinosaurus, 0.01%. Chance of not getting a refund if your boat mysteriously disappears, 99%. Ah, exciting and terrifying all at once. Back in reality, Spinosaurus has been gone for a very long time, but it's hard to think of another dinosaur that is both so terrifying and so weirdly pitiful. Its original bones were bombed to dust. Its body has been drawn wrong, redrawn, and patched over again and again. Its lifestyle gets yanked back and forth between super crocodile and awkward waiter with big dreams. In its own time, Spinosaurus was just another creature trying to stay alive in a chaotic river system where anything that couldn't adapt simply vanished. We are the latecomers, picking up scraps of bone, turning them into a monster, naming it, and then arguing endlessly about whether it really could swim. Maybe the fairest thing we can say is this. Without Spinosaurus, the story of Cretaceous Rivers would be missing its most emotional main character, the misunderstood river monster that was both nightmare and victim of our endlessly messy human imagination.